Hey everyone, this is Andrew, and in this video, I'm going to go over everything you need to get started using SFML. To start off, we'll want to download Visual Studio 2022. You can just download the community version by clicking the free download, and it'll start in the top right hand corner. From there, you can click the Start Setup, click Yes, and it'll launch the Visual Studio installer. While that's downloading, we can head over to the SFML download page where we'll download the 64-bit Visual C++ 17, the one that says 20, 2022 in the parentheses because we're using Visual Studio 2022. Once SFML is done downloading, we'll need to extract the zip file. What I like to do is extract the zip file inside of the downloads folder first, just by right-clicking on it and going to extract. Once you're done extracting SFML, it's good to move the folder into a more stable location. So instead of keeping this SFML 3.0.0 folder inside of downloads, I'm going to move it over into the source folder where I keep all of the projects that I work on. So for example, under my main drive, I just have this folder called source. And then inside of source is where I keep all of my repositories. And at the root level of that, I'm just going to drag over the SFML 3.0.0 file. Once you're done with that, we can open up the Visual Studio installer. Once Visual Studio Community 2022 is done installing, you'll want to go to Modify. Then under Workloads, you'll want to scroll down to where it says Desktop Development with C++ and click that. And then you'll want to install it. I've already installed it, so I can just skip over this step. Once the Desktop Development workload is downloaded, we can launch Visual Studio 2022. And we will click Create a New Project. We're going to create a console application, we'll click next. And then like I said before, for the location for this console application, I like to go into my source file. And then I create a folder called repos. And that's where I put all of my projects. And I'm just going to name this SFML 3.0 tutorial, you can name yours whatever you want to click create there. From here, you should be able to just click local Windows debugger at the top, and you'll see a little console pop up that says hello world, and then the program ends. In order to start using SFML, we need to set up some of our project properties. So over here on the right side in the solution explorer, you're going to want to right click on your project, go to the bottom and click properties. To start off in the top left corner under configuration, we're going to want to change to all configurations. Um, there's also a debug and a release mode. You can have separate properties for debug and release. This is very common, but there are some things that we need to set up for both. So we can start off with those first, go to all configurations. Then under the general properties, we're going to need to change the C language standard in order to use SFML 3.0. We need to at least be on C 17, but I prefer to use C 20. It has some nice features that I like. The next thing you're going to want to do is go under C general tab under the additional include directories, go to edit, click new line, then the ellipses. This will let you select a folder. We're going to go back into our source file into the SFML 3.0 file that we dragged over here and click on the include directory. Um, you just want to click on the folder and then click select folder. Perfect. Okay. There. Then we can go over to the linker and go to the general settings under additional library directories. You're going to want to do the same thing that we just did for the include directories, go to edit new line ellipses, then go over to source SFML. This time click lib and select folder, click okay there. And then we can click apply. There are also some additional things that need to be set up just for the debug and release versions. So we're going to start by going to the configuration and changing to the debug version. Then we're going to go under linker, go to input, click additional dependencies, edit, and then we need to add some dependencies here. Most SFML programs are going to at least require three libs. So you're going to want to have the SFML window lib. And since we're doing the debug lib, you'll want to hyphenate D at the end. We'll need SFML graphics lib and the SFML system lib. There's also audio libs and one other lib, but just to get started, these are the things you're going to need. Click okay there and apply. 
Then we'll wanna go over to the release version, do the same thing, add the same libs, but this time without the hyphenated D at the end. So we're gonna have SFML window lib, SFML graphics lib, and SFML system lib. Click apply there. And then the next thing you'll want to do is open up the project that you're currently working on. So for me, under source, I always save my projects in the repo folder, and I have called this one SFML 3.0 tutorial. In the X64 folder, you'll see a debug and a release folder. If you don't see these, you'll just need to run your project at least once in debug and at least once in release and the folders will be created automatically. In order to use SFML though, we're going to need to put some DLLs uh, locally here. So we can start by opening up the debug folder. And then on the left hand here, I just have the SFML 3.0 folder opened up. I'm going to go into the bin and then I'm going to copy over the debug system, the debug window, and the debug graphics DLL. So I just have those selected. I selected them all at the same time by holding down control. Yep, and then I can just copy them with control C and paste them on the right side with control V. And then additionally, I'm gonna wanna do this for the release version with the same DLLs just without the hyphenated D at the end. So I'm going to go system, windows, and graphics. Paste those in, perfect. And then as a final step, we're gonna to need to paste in the example code that SFML provides us. I also have it in the description below. So I'm just gonna paste that in here, save it, and then run it. And there we go. We have a window with the green circle in it. And additionally, you should be able to change to release mode and also run that. And now that you have SFML set up and working, you're all ready to get started doing whatever you want. Good luck.